Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Thing from another world, movie, thoughts. Okay, anyone who knows me is going to know exactly what bothered me the most about this movie and what thus I must first talk about. Again, if I like this movie, I'm not going to claim that it's not a good movie. If you watch my review of it, you'll see that, yeah, I, I clearly recognize that it is a good movie. But... It really bothers me that there are basically three types of people in this movie. As far as the male characters, at least. And the female characters are not that important in this story. The... Or at least they, they don't drive the story forward the way the male wants to. Anyway... We have aggressive American military. As, let's, just, let's just go with aggressive military. We have a reporter almost compulsively in hunting a scoop. He, he keeps freaking out about how I can't contact the, my editor. Oh, my editor is going to lose it. He's going to shoot himself. And then we have scientists. And of these three groups, the one that is wrong is the scientist. I, I, I'll at least give it that not all the scientists were wrong. But still, it has this... It seems to suggest that basically science is, you know, just gonna cause more harm than good. Uh, or at least it's... You, you can't follow it, or it'll lead to our demise. It will literally... The dude turns off the generator as they're about to, to kill the thing. You know, it's, it's not the military whose first instinct is shoot it. Like the, the guy, when it wakes up, the first thing he does is shoot it. Okay, fair enough. Maybe it was moving towards him, attacking him, something. But yeah, they just, they keep thinking we just gotta kill this thing. How? How do we do it? It's, it's, it's the... It's like that stereotype in Mars attacks, the, the war-hungry general, that pretty much sums up the military in this movie. And then, yeah, like I said, the, the scoop-hungry journalist who is just constantly, I mean, he barely talks about anything else than, oh, you have to let me broadcast this story, and, and then it, it even ends with him in a sort of more glorified role than he had been up to that point. He's, he's like saying, oh, be, be careful, you know, watch the skies, and, and if you hear Orson Welles report something over the radio, run out into the streets, grab your shotgun, and just be ready to shoot. It's just really, it's an effective enough ending. I'm, I'm not claiming that. Also, do not get me started on the inclusion in that ending monologue of Noah's frickin' Ark and how earlier he was talking about this is the biggest story since the parting of the Red Sea. Yeah, you don't know your history, do you? The parting of the Red Sea did not actually happen. Mother of... It's just a movie. It's just a movie. It's, it's like that trailer for Last House on the Left. It's, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. 
But the scientist is, is the bad guy. Okay, I get that this was like just after the bombing of Hiroshima. And I, that, that helps. I can, I can understand. I can more forgive that they paint him in, in such a light. But I really do think that they could have had the distinction that there are, you know, in science, as in any other field, as with everything in life, there are people who are in it for positive means, it's, you know, seeking positive results, and there are people who, yeah, go in another direction. I don't see why this movie couldn't have been the ethical scientist versus the unethical scientist. Heck, they could have drawn parallels to, well, I don't know how much they knew about Mengele and all that, but if they did, they could have drawn parallels to that. Science is a field that really requires the application of ethics. If you are not ethical about it, you get Mengele. That is, that was sort of science. We actually, we have learned stuff from that, as, as far as I recall. It's been a while since I read about him, but, okay, different. Stanley Milgram. That was not nice. That was not ethical. But we learned from it. It was science, but if we... And that's the kind of thing that I'm... And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Milburn was late, but whatever. Science needs ethics, and this could easily have been a battle of... Heck, maybe it should have just been the, the scientist just wanting... That's the thing that really frustrates me. It is actually science. It is, that is what he's driven by. He's talking about, we have to learn from this thing. That's your bad guy. That is, I'm gonna wake up the, the rest of my apartment. That's nah, not that late in the evening. Maybe some of them are napping, having, having a good, anyway. That's your bad guy, the, the, the guy who is, I, I really hope you're enjoying this. I, no, no, I, I'm not even, not even sarcastic. I, I hope this is as entertaining to you as it is cathartic to me. I wouldn't be making this video otherwise. The bad guy is, well, other than the thing that is, other than the intelligent carrot. It's, it's, I, I love how the how that conversation goes. So you're talking about a, a s super carrot. Yes, yes, a, a, a carrot, as you put it, an, an intelligent carrot. So this guy, no, no, you know what? You had me at intelligent carrot. There's nowhere to go from there. You can't make that goofier. You just can't. I, I guess that was their attempt at saying, see, this isn't some good, because just saying vegetable was, I don't know why it needed to be a specific vegetable. Did they like pole? Is, is the carrot the least popular vegetable? And, and they were thinking, this is how we make sure that no one sides with the vegetable man. Anyway, other than the thing, the bad guy is the scientist who wants to do science. He's not even completely wrong. Basically, where he is wrong is that he takes no precautions. And that's not even science. Taking no precautions in, in exploring something that you don't really know about, that is not science. That is not good science, anyway. The... But, but yeah, he, he wanted to learn from it, and basically, if they had just... The, the, the things that grew really fast... 
Yeah. I, I, well, I, I'm not sure it's entirely ethical. Actually, it's not entirely ethical since they are intelligent. But since the movie does not bring up ethics, let's just go with, okay, kill some of those, dissect them, find out, run tests on them. Since we're not being ethical about science, you can learn from them. You don't need the big lug alive to do that. You don't need the walking intelligent carrot. Yeah, I'm not letting that one go anytime soon. They could have actually done good science on it. They didn't have to. Why were they so hungry to kill? I love how the big... I'm getting sidetracked. Why were they so hungry to kill the tiny little saplings or whatever you want to call them? that were feeding on the blood. Why didn't they just... It was contained. Were you afraid they were gonna blow up? I... I have no concept of what they were so afraid of. They could easily have contained those. How about find something that they can't break through? Use that to contain them, then run some tests on them. Again, since we're not being ethical. I, I, yeah, to get back to the thought that I started before, I love this big shock effect of they feed on human blood. Yeah, we feed on flesh, as do plenty of other predators. And what is your point? Blood, yes, blood. It's it's not a big deal. I get the vampire thing, which, by the way, <laughs> yeah, nice job on originality there. You're basically saying that this guy is the outer space vegetable version of Dracula. He's an intelligent, extraterrestrial vampire plant. That's what you're going with. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pursue another thought here. Yeah, the, the vampirism thing, yeah, that, what's the big deal? How are you even so sure that it needs to be like human blood? It's not like that, yeah, it, I also love how they're, they're so sure that this is an invasion. It's one dude. He's gonna invade the entire planet. Even if they could only fit one dude in one spaceship, wouldn't they have sent one more, more than one? Actually, I suppose that ties into the ending monologue. Maybe he was saying this was just the scout ship or something that see that would have made sense if this was just yeah and by the way the scientist might not be completely wrong he was talking about how you know we should be able to communicate and he runs up to him and he talks to him and then he gets smacked on the head that doesn't completely disprove that the creature could be communicated with you thought him from the ice, that's like waking him back up. Maybe he was just... Maybe he's just not a morning person. Maybe he was hungover. I'm sure many people get relatively violent when people are standing, shouting in their face, and other people are trying to kill them. Actually, yeah, that, that would make me grouchy, too. Now, the... One... One sort of... There's early in the film, when they blow up the, the thing, 
not not the the thing the thing, but when they blow up to get to to free the UFO. I think it is. I love their their glee at discovering. They're they're like standing in a circle and I, I was expecting them to break into song. It it looked like what was that Michael Jackson thing with the heal the world kind of thing. And they're just like ecstatic. <gasps> it's round. It's a flying saucer. What did you think it was? It it flew. Even if it wasn't round, it'd still be a UFO, it just wouldn't be a saucer. D did you have a bet riding over the shape of it? And, and somewhere there's a guy who's gonna be forced to pay up because it wasn't like a rectangular shape or what? Anyway, when they're blowing up and they're like ducking and, and stuff because, ah, the explosion in front of us. Dangerous explosion, and the dog is just standing there, just looking around. What are we doing? And any of you gonna play with me? Okay. That is that is pretty funny. The it is a little surprising that this movie did not go for the paranoia of the short story with this imitation ability of the alien, you know, being able to take a human's shape and basically convince the human's friends that it's still that human being because they did it I don't know, six years later or something, in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which, by the way, you should definitely watch. Forget the goofy title, it's a great movie. Yes, I am talking about the original. 57 one, I think, is when it's from. Yeah, I, I don't know quite why. If, if you combine the two movies, you would... Yeah, a lot closer to the short story, but anyway. And and I mean that that movie is also very much an allegory for you know the Red Scare. I suppose that might more or less cover it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.